all encouraged to do what we want to do, be who we want to be, follow our dreams and live the life we love. But how many of us can say we really know what we want to do and who we want to be? Aspirational images and motivational quotes, they drive this need to be constantly striving for more. Set a goal, have a focus, you can achieve anything. It's what they say, but what if you just can't work out what your goal is? If you've ever felt frustrated or overwhelmed by this question of what you want to do and who you want to be, relax. You're not alone. I totally get it. Because I felt this way most of my life. My name's Liam. I'm 33 years old and I've been fortunate. I did well at school and at university. I have a supportive family and I've had plenty of opportunities. I've always worked hard and I've taken time to reflect and consider both my goals and my aspirations. But still, I don't know what I want to do and who I want to be. But now, what I do know is that's okay. And the reason it's okay is because I've discovered an approach which has allowed me to achieve some amazing things I'm really proud of, but without having that long-term goal. And it's that approach that I'd like to share with you today. It's quite simply to explore and experiment more. Let me explain. How many of you have ever been stopped by the fear of having to make the right choice? Hands up. And how many of you have found yourself waiting until you're certain before taking action? Hands up. This approach, I mean, I totally get that the unknown is scary. And we don't want to get things wrong, and we certainly don't want to fail. But you see, nothing is going to change if we stand still and do nothing. The alternative, though, is to explore and experiment. Because when we explore, we examine, we inquire, we ask questions in order, well, to learn. And we remove the pressure and judgment of right, wrong, good, bad, success and failure. When we experiment, we take action precisely because we're uncertain of the outcome in order to gain more insight about it, not the other way around. If we can adopt this mindset of exploring and experimenting, we create the safe space within which to get comfortable with the unknown. And we create the context for action without having to know the final destination or end goal. Because we need to take action if we want anything to change. Okay, so how do we apply this approach of exploring and experimenting in everyday life? Well, how many of you have ever had a personal project, goal, hobby, or interest that you've done in your free time? Hands up. Great, you've already started because it's my experience that these, let's call them projects, create great safe spaces in which to get comfortable exploring and experimenting. Without realizing it, this is what I've been doing ever since I was a little kid, using projects to explore and experiment on myself and on my life. And I've learned so much about myself by doing so. Yeah, not all of it comfortable at the time, sure, but always hugely beneficial in understanding what I want to do, and who I want to be. But also sometimes what I don't want to do, and who I don't want to be. I'd like to share with you now two stories from my previous projects which I feel demonstrate this difference that's possible if we do explore and experiment. The first starts in 2014. I have an idea for an app. It's called Fitness Avatar, and it helps people check their exercise technique. I worked very hard over two years developing the idea, 
making sure I had everything just right before spending a lot of money getting someone to build it for me. And I did it. It went live on the App Store. But then nothing. Silence. No real engagement because despite doing lots of research, I hadn't actually engaged an audience, let alone asked if or what anyone actually wanted. See, I was desperate to prove that that one initial idea that I had was right, and that I myself was right. But I failed to explore and experiment, thus limiting the potential of my idea. Fast forward two years to my second story. It's 2016, and I have another idea for an event to host a volunteer-run, independently organized TEDx event in the seaside town of Folkestone in the UK, where I live. In the past, I probably would have busied myself developing the idea, working it all out, getting it just right, before I told anyone. But this time, uh-uh, I stopped myself. I couldn't bear the thought of spending all that time and effort again on something nobody wanted. But I was also scared. I was scared to share my idea. The uncertainty of whether people would get it and like it, or if they just think I was crazy. See, as a kid, I always struggled to express my ideas and got really frustrated when I couldn't articulate them clearly to people. That was why today I've always just done projects by myself. But after, well, 30 years, I realized that wasn't working. Without knowing exactly how I would do it, I decided to do an experiment to host a small meetup to share my idea and see if anyone turned up. And you know what? They did. We had a full house. See, it turned out me not having all the answers and being open about the fact I didn't know exactly how we do it created the space for others to contribute and to freely offer their time and expertise to be a part of my team. <coughs> Three years on, and our team has just delivered our third successful TEDx Folkestone. These projects, they taught me three key lessons in how to explore an experiment that I'd like to share with you now. Number one, your goal is just a tool. Don't get blindly, or in my case, stubbornly attached to it. You see, launching the app has been my goal, but I lost sight of the reason and the people I was trying to help in doing so. Number two, your answer is not the answer. You see, me not having all of the answers made TEDx Folkestone bigger and better than I ever could have dreamed or achieved alone. Because not having the answer enabled me to reach out and engage others. Number three. Speak it to find it. Sharing my idea for TEDx Folkestone, yeah, it was scary. And what I said on that first meetup was, well, far from perfect. But only by getting it out of my head did the idea become clear, as did the feeling of inspiration, which was why I was doing it all in the first place. Yes, the unknown was uncomfortable and scary at times, but you know what? I took the action anyway. As a result, I'm now in a place where gradually, I've been able to turn what started as personal projects in my free time into my full-time work. And I absolutely love it, because I now accept there will never be a right, perfect, final answer of what my future looks like. 
but I am totally loving the ongoing journey of exploring and experimenting what I want to do and who I want to be. So, where could you explore and experiment more in your life? And what project will create the safe space for you to do so? You could start with something simple, something like trying a new hobby, joining a club, or volunteering in your community. Whatever interests you and is at the level of time, money, and security you need. So I'd like to ask you now to think of something that interests you or that you've always been curious to try, but you put off because you are either scared or uncertain. Have a think now. Go on. If you do, great. Start exploring there. Go experiment with that. Or at least, well, just go give it a try. And if you don't like it, fine, quit. Go try something else instead. Okay, but what if you say to me, I couldn't think of anything. Or you have something, but you're worried about getting stuck along the way. Okay, in which case, I'd like to revisit the three lessons I shared, but we're going to turn them into three steps. Steps that you can use to both kickstart new projects or to revive existing projects if you ever get stuck along the way. So, the first step is to ask yourself, if your goal is just a tool, then why do you want to achieve it? If you can get clear and committed to why, rather than being attached to that one specific goal, well then you have the opportunity to change the goal, the tool, anytime it stops working for you, without giving up your commitment to your why. So, why do you want to do it? The second step is to ask yourself, if your answer is not the answer, then what do you want to learn? If we can give up this obsession with right, wrong, good, bad, well, you know what, then we can just embrace the learning. Because it's the space between the idea and the solution, that is where all the value is. So, what do you want to learn? And the third and final step is to ask yourself, when you speak it to find it, how do you want to feel? If when you open your mouth, what comes out doesn't feel authentic, then it means it's probably not right for you. However, if when you speak about it, you feel good, Great, then you won't have to wait until the end of your project to feel how you want to feel by doing it all. Yes, what you say at first probably won't be perfect, but only by getting it out of your head will you be able to find the best words to create the best feelings. So, how do you want to feel? Taking the steps to answer these questions takes time and, well, courage. But doing so will create and maintain this mindset of exploring and experimenting. Whatever happens with your project, complete it, change it, or quit it, whatever the outcome, good or bad, you know what? You've started. You've taken action and you've moved forwards. Even if you decide that where you end up is not where you want to be, well, right there is your starting point for your next project. Thus creating the ongoing journey of exploring 
and experimenting what you want to do and who you want to be. But don't take my word for it. Go out there and explore and experiment with this idea for yourselves. Thank you.